A rise in the number of vitamin B6 poisoning cases across Australia has prompted the medicines regulator to review its classifications. The Therapeutic Goods Administration wants supplements containing more than 50 milligrams of the vitamin to require a pharmacist's sign-off. B6 occurs naturally in a wide variety of foods, including meat, fruit and vegetables. A synthetic version is added to some processed foods, as well as sold over the counter as a supplement. The vast majority of those contain far more than the recommended daily amount, which is around 1.7 milligrams. The vitamin is crucial for brain function, immunity and a well-functioning nervous system. But in high doses, synthetic B6 can cause significant and life-altering nerve damage. Clinics testing blood samples from across Australia are reporting a massive jump in the number of people coming forward for B6 tests and an increase in the toxicity of the samples. In May, one Queensland clinic said 4.5% of the 10,000 samples tested indicated the patient was very likely to develop a nerve condition. Dr. David Kanowski is a clinical pathologist at that clinic and he joins us now uh, with more details. David, good afternoon to you. Yes, good afternoon. So can you tell us about the uh, increase in the numbers of B6 blood samples you've been testing and what level of toxicity you've been seeing? Sure, sure. So we're currently testing at a rate of just over 10,000 samples a month which is, um, I must say, pushing us fairly much to the limit of what we can cover it in testing. Um, it has jumped up to that level from around about 6,000 a month um, towards the end of last year. And if you compare that in the past to levels that we've done, around 2021, uh, end of that year, uh, between 2020 and 2021, we were running at about 2,000 a month. So um, we do about a just under 100 samples in a run. So we're sort of doing up to seven runs a day, which mm. is you know, quite a stretch, really. That is a big jump. How do you count yeah. for that? Um, I really think it's a couple of things. One, one is I think uh, population is just starting to hear things in news uh, items. And I think doctors and GPs in general are now becoming more aware of this as a possible cause when they have a patient presents with some nerve symptoms, but particularly what we call a peripheral neuropathy, which is numbness in the feet and maybe the fingers or even further up uh, and and that wasn't a test on the radar the doctors would have done some years back but it's certainly one that they're doing more often um, and one of my colleagues um, uh, Dr. Jim Daly also published an article uh, in the AMJ Australian Medical Journal last year alerting doctors to this issue because uh, we're one of the places one of the few places in Australia that does a lot of this testing and I think that's increased the understanding of doctors that this is something that's, you know, an important thing to keep in mind. So what's your view then of the TGA's call uh, for pharmacists to sign off on over-the-counter B6 supplements, those that are more than 50 milligrams? OK, look, I think it's a good uh, move in the right direction. I mean, previously, um, preparations had up to 200 milligrams. I um, mean, if you're taking something with 200 milligrams a day, you're going to become toxic, you know, in a couple of months, really, or even sooner. Um, I personally thought it should have perhaps gone lower um, because it's going to be easy enough if you're taking something even just below 50 a day to generate toxicity. I've seen patients taking uh, 20 milligrams a day in various preparations who end up with a neuropathy. So um, it's a start, you know, mm. perhaps it could have been a little lower. So you're saying that people uh, react in different ways to taking B6. One person's toxicity results could be different from another's despite both taking the same amount of B6. Yeah, sure. And at different levels. There was a trial done with some volunteers. They were a neurology registrars actually training doctors in the 90s. And they actually took it themselves. And then when they started um, getting nerve changes, which they were detecting by conduction studies, so they weren't almost symptomatic. Uh, probably a trial we wouldn't do today, but some of those had symptoms when they got to a level of, we call up to 190, it's in nanomoles, but I'll just say 190 is normal. And they, some of them around 250, 270 got symptoms, some went over 1,000 and still didn't have symptoms. So it's quite variable. But we know that above those levels, toxicity is certainly possible and, and above 1,000, it's fairly likely. So David, is a big part of this that uh, often people just aren't aware that they're ingesting B6 in the doses that they are because it's present in so many different products. 
Sure. Yeah, look, I think that's always been the case. And, and the biggest culprit, I think, in the past was actually in magnesium supplements, uh, sort of things people would take for cramps. And often people would take a couple of these tablets, uh, maybe two or three, four times a day. So you might end up with six or eight magnesium tablets if you're having problems with cramps. And some of those had 60 milligrams of B6 in with it. Uh, and it wasn't often written on the front of the bottle. So you'd buy a preparation for cramps and you'd be unaware that you'd be taking this. Um, other sources, uh, you know, we find it in energy drinks. Um, so there's a variety of things that people probably don't think are going to be an issue. And if you consume a lot of those products, I mean, even Barocca has 10 milligrams. That's probably not enough by itself, but if you took it every day, you could still run into trouble. So, yeah. And B6 occurs naturally in foods like uh, meat, fruit, and veg, as we've said. Can you get enough of the vitamin without needing any supplements? Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, the record day, recommended daily allowances, depending on the country, somewhere between one and two milligrams, often around one milligram a day. And um, for example, the, probably the food that's highest, as far as I'm aware, is chickpeas. If you had a, a meal with some chickpeas, just an average serve, you've already got one milligram of vitamin B6. And that sort of in intake is fine, really. But there are some people who have a clinically diagnosed deficiency in B6. Yeah, they, it is. They need the supplement. Yeah, it's probably not isolated. It, it typically would be someone who has general problems absorbing things. I'm thinking of people who have had bariatric surgery for weight loss, such as a gastric bypass. Um, or they've got a general problem with absorption, that, like untreated celiac disease, where there are minerals and vitamins that are poorly absorbed. Um, but they would tend to take a supplement with a multivite, not just B6 by itself. What's your overall advice then, David? Look, I think you've got to be aware, and if you're into taking supplements because you think you might need it, consider ones that are quite a low level of B6. And, you know, some of the multivites have less than a milligram, which is fine, is safe. But in general, it was offered it to a variety of people. It was even offered to pregnant ladies because they thought it would help with morning sickness. But there's not a lot of ev evidence that anyone in the general population really needs to take extra for this. So I, I try to just read the uh, product information and avoid it if you can, really. Dr. David Kanaski, thank you so much. You're welcome.